That's right. Hey, it's sky time. Yes, it is. Steve Cates, Dr. Sky. And boy, in January, uh, you have a whole lot of activity going Absolutely, on. Absolutely, Brad. Good to be back with you and Happy New Year. You know, it's amazing as we move on to Sunday the 20th, Arizona Sky Watchers get to see this amazing total lunar eclipse. And it actually begins for people by around 8.30. So if the weather conditions are good, look into the east, this particular eclipse, when the moon is now going to move into the yeah, Earth. 8.30, though, 8.30 tonight? 8.30 Sunday evening. Okay, all Sunday right. Sunday evening the 20th. Around 8.30, you'll see the left edge of the moon move into the shadow we call the umbra, the deep shadow of the Earth. And then around 9.40 p.m., we reach the maximum of this eclipse, the totality phase, otherwise known as the red blood moon. And you should be able to see that. That's a 62-minute event. So we're fortunate, Shoot. Pat, in this particular time zone that we get to see this early to mid to maybe late evening. The entire process takes about three hours. So it's not just the government shutdown. It is a lunar shutdown. Absolutely. Boy, you're talking about hey, the whole strong. universe being involved here. Absolutely. Why is it red? Why is the moon red? Great question. What happens at the edges of the Earth? And by the way, if you were standing on the surface of the moon looking up at the Earth, the yeah. Earth's what's covering the sun. The Earth would be, look at this, four times the diameter of the full moon you see in our sky. But the reason it turns red, the weather conditions around the edges of the Earth, if there's a lot of clouds, and in times when they had a lot of volcanic activity, like Mount Pinatubo, however the density or thickness or clarity of that air is, the light is simply being bent around the edges. So what we see is a reddish effect, meaning more clouds and haze around the edges of the Earth, the darker the eclipse would be. If the sky was totally clear, the, uh, the moon would look almost pumpkin orange. But I predict this will be a deep red. As if we don't have enough red on the moon, yes. we now have on the other side, yes. China. We sure do. Wow. Now, there's some speculation now. We know there's so many people that, not so many, but some people out there believe that we never went to the moon. That's a whole other story. Get out of town. Right. Just this week, we're hearing some conspiracy theorists, again, I don't believe it, that even the Chung A, it's pronounced Chung A for Chinese lander, could never have landed on the far side. It's not the dark side. So now that's raging. But, but here's the point. It appears that they have gone to the far side of the moon. And interestingly enough, it's a two-part uh, space vehicle, the lander, and then there's a rover. And inside the lander, on the Chang'e 4, for our Chinese friends, I hope I pronounced it right, I think I did, there's some germination going on. There's seeds there in these very, very precious little capsules. And they've already germinated or had one start, a little cotton seed. So it's actually the first other than, and it's never happened on the moon, we see a germination of cotton. They're looking to do potatoes and other things. Why? for future inhabitants of the lunar surface, future inhabitants, we're obviously going to have to grow food. And what, why not start with cotton? I mean, you can make, what, shirts and underwear or whatever you need to do. No, and with hemp, right. there's a whole new industry yes. on the other side of the moon. <laughs> oh, I'm telling no, that's you. funny. It's really, really exciting yeah. stuff that's going on. And commercial sure. space travel Absolutely. is right around the corner. Elon Musk, last year, salute them with SpaceX. So many great successful launches. The Falcon Heavy that they launched back last February, they'll do it again. There's now a prototype on the internet. People should scour the internet. Look up the prototype for the Mars rocket and the Mars lander. It looks so sci-fi, Pat. It's incredible. You see this thing just like out of a 1950s sci-fi movie, and that may be one of the vehicles that actually goes to the surface of the planet Mars. And that's what Dr. Sky has to say. Yes. Now we're going to move from the sky to the mountains. Get your bike shorts on back in just a couple of minutes.